anchor. You say, why are you the church today? You can stand up big and bold because God said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Amen? Amen. Why do you go to church on Sunday? Uh-uh. Mm -mm -mm. No, because the majority of people just go there. If they start going to start, you need to be on the rock. Christ Jesus, y'all take heed as y'all read the commandment. Make it a part of your lives. Amen? Amen? We're going to get into some song of consecration and our first song will be 308. I will be their savior, holy thine. Teach me how. He's one to teach us, amen. amen. Send his Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into all truth. Amen. Amen. Let's take heed to the word. Number 308. I will be their savior, holy thine. Teach me how. Teach me how. I will do thy will, O Lord, not mine. Help me, help me now. Holy God, Lord, holy God, holy Lord, holy God, this is my vow. Holy God, Lord, holy God. Welcome, Brother Paul, with the message. Love, law, and grace. Pray much for you. Good morning, happy Sabbath. Let's just kneel for prayer, please. Spare our lives through many toils and labor, 
through high waters and high skies and all around the world you have taken us to bring us to this place today. We thank you. Be it those that are listening on the radio, those watching on YouTube, and those present, present here today. And when we leave here today, we'll understand a little bit more on the word love, law, and grace. Forgive us of our sins. Let your spirit fall afresh on us. When all is said in front of you, pray. We will save in your wonderful kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning once again. If you're visiting with us for the first time and you don't happen to get a copy of the Great Country Voice, your Steps to Christ, why don't you raise your hand up there bring you a copy? That Steps to Christ and Great Country Voice, if you didn't get a copy when you came through the door, why don't you raise your hand up there bring you a copy? For those who took the time to be here for the first time today, welcome. We pray this will not be your last time. And for those who have been coming through the period of weeks, we pray that you will invite others to come along with you next time. Amen? Amen. Our topic today, love, law, and grace. And those that are visiting, um, if you have a question or comment you'd like to add to the discussion, or maybe a question you may have that does not pertain to the, to the lesson for the day, you can feel free to ask that question at any time. Our scripture text is always come from the book of Revelation chapter 1. That's the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. And we'll meet tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock for our continuation of the sanctuary message. And then this afternoon at 6 o'clock, the young people will have a panel discussion. I pray you will come and encourage them along the way. And on Wednesday night, we'll be back here once again with our continuation of our Bible classes that we have here from different times and at this place. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 to 3 together. Jesus Christ, which God showed unto his knees which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and to his servant John. All the things that he saw. This prophecy and keep those things for the time is at hand. And Titus chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 11 to 15. Maybe it's going to come up in a lesson. We're going to, we're going to read it then. It's going to come up in a lesson. Our next text we normally read from time to time. That's Titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 15. We're going to look at that today. Again our topic. Love Law and grace. On the news this week, they were talking about a crime situation. Under the caption, pastors and community leaders, what do they want? They call the government to do what? Now I'm trying to figure out how the pastors get involved in that. Can someone please help me with that? Can someone please help me with um, how the pastors got involved in that? In fact, we can hear what they have to say. So pastors, community leaders, call on the government to address the crime situation. And on the screen, a young man has a charge for attempted murder of my neighbor, the young man, he, um, who, who allegedly they said that he um, attacked, um, usually right across the street from me. Many of you will know him once we put his picture up. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. 20-year-old charged with attempted murder. So let's hear what the pastors and the community leaders says about how they want the government to address crime. As we look at our topic of love, law, and grace. We want the government to address the crime situation. Hopefully the government will be able to help them out, I don't know. So let's try to get this thing to work. Calling for simple penalties, but more programs that target at-risk um, youth. I can use the, the blue one. In crime, Janelle Longley has more. Let's start off at the top. 
Well, community leaders are tonight calling on government to address the vaccine crime problem, not only calling for stiffer penalties, but more programs that target at-risk youth who often become participants in crime. Janelle Longley has more on this. Remind Minister Marvin Davies, he promised that he would put a major dent in crime. Former president of the Bahamas Christian Council, Bishop Simeon Hall, calling on National Security Minister Marvin Daines to commit to his promise, adding that he believes that stricter penalties are the answer to the seemingly widespread increase in armed robberies, home invasions, and rapes reported in the capital in recent weeks. Hall says he believes in order to see a reduction in crime, legislation needs to change. Young men are not afraid of jail, they're not afraid of the courts, and they laugh at the policemen. I'm saying we need to send a strong message to these criminals and not tolerate them at all. However, senior pastor of Bahamas Faith Ministries, Dave Burroughs, proposes a different solution as more and more young people are being brought before the courts for criminal offenses. To have a number of programs throughout the community that are targeting young people because young people, as we know according to statistics, are committing the most crime. In an effort to minimize crime hotspot areas, various crime watch groups have been established to assist police in the fight against crime. Co-chair of the Neighborhood Watch Committee, Kino Wong says, the onus also lies with homeowners. You have to be built vigilant in what you do. Um, surveillance cameras, um, more lighting, protection of your yard. If you're going out late at night or so you're coming in late at night, you should at least allow another neighbor to know what is going on, where you're going, where you're coming. Crime has also impacted businesses. On Tuesday, gunmen held up employees at a photo shop in Carmichael Road, which ended in a gun battle with police. President of the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce, Jeffrey Brackle, says it's something that the business community continues to monitor. It, it, it just speaks to the times in which you live, uh, the need to, to be more prudent in how we conduct business. As a matter of fact, Using a digital payment platform will not leave anything for the robbers to come for. So that by itself is a benefit, because if there's no cash for you to come for, then what are you coming for? Go, you know, go sit under the tree. While the criminal element continues to threaten homes and businesses, police have been commended for their response efforts. Janelle Longley, Eyewitness News. So what says the pastors? Bishop Simon Hall said, in the send a strong message to the criminals. Is that in the Bible? They have borrowed that we need more programs. I guess the Bible is silent on this, eh? That you got two prominent ministers who hold a very important part of society when it comes to their status and also their influence. And the most they can say it's trivial, 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 trivial things. Does my tongue get tied up? National Security Minister says, serious crime is what? I wonder where you live in. Is that true? <laughs> I told my friend Marvin Dames, just before he's elected in the position, say, for Dames, Go put your uniform on, go help your colleagues and stop doing foolishness. Because you can't stop me from killing my wife if I so desire. <coughs> Can he? Unless I tell him. Those young men right now who are planning to do something they should not do, you think the Lord is with them right now? Tell them not to do it. You have Holy Spirit right there. Don't do this stupid thing, man. This thing make no sense. Because the Holy Ghost job is to convict the world of sin, amen? So he's right there with a young man and I plan to do something stupid in a little while from now, maybe tonight. Young man, don't do this. Go look yourself a job. But he decides to do otherwise. But Mr. Dam says, oh, serious crime is down, man. Everything's going to be okay. Over 100 years ago, the prophet has put it this way. We are living in the midst of what? Uh, now this is written over 100 years ago. We are living in the midst of an epidemic of what? Crime. And which thoughtful and God-fearing man everywhere stands aghast or stands horrified. 
Corruption that prevails is beyond the power of the human pen to describe. Every day brings fresh revelations of political strife. Yes? Yes? Right here in Nassau, everyone joking for the next position, the next general election. Bribery, fraud, every day brings its hard, sickening record of violence and lawlessness. The indifference of human suffering, the brutal and fiendish destruction of human life, every day testifies to a decrease in insanity. Decrease? You sure? Every day testifies to an increase of insanity, murder, and suicide. Who can doubt that? What does that work? Satanic, Satanic agencies, Mr. Dames and Bishop Simon Hall, and our dear friend Pastor Dave Boris. Satanic agencies are at work among men with increasing activity to distract and corrupt the mind and defile and destroy the body. That's happening right now. It's amazing how these men will get prime time um, physicians to speak to the nation and they won't use their Bibles. So here's a scripture text maybe they can use next time if they're listening this morning. Here in the book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs 3 1, this is my favorite text. Maybe Bishop Simon Hall, when you get his time, when you get that mic, stick it this morning, and maybe you'll read this in the record. Amen, Bishop? I'll say amen for you. See, 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 that's why I tell you, my friend, pastors are dangerous men. You know, if that fellow walks with AK-47, all he wants is some money. Once we give him his money, he's going his way. So let's see what the Bible says. My son, forget my law. My son, forget not my law. But let thy heart keep my commandments. And what will be the result? For what type of days? For length of days. And what type of life? Long life. And what else? Peace shall I add unto thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them upon thy neck and take up your gold chain. Bind that upon your neck if you want to bind something. Not your gold chain. Write them upon the tables of what? Thine heart. And so should I find favor and good understanding in the sight of God who else? And man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall erect what? Is that good news? Amen. You think the people of the need to know that? Yes. We need more. We need more. We need more programs for the young people. We need more stiffer penalties. My friend, our heart is desperately wicked. And only God can know it. My son, give me thine heart, and I will give you a heart of flesh. But no. Paul boys put it this way. Isaiah, sorry. Isaiah 54, 17. Isaiah 54, 17 tells us where our protection comes from. It doesn't come from the beliefs of Papa, my friend. No weapon that is formed against thee shall what? Prosper. Every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, thou shall what? Now who is the thou? The thou in us, my friend. God is going to condemn those tongues that rise up against us. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. That their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. Amen? Amen. So the Lord says that every weapon that is right now forming against you and I, once we stand righteous, he will deal with those weapons. Amen? Amen. Anything that is planned right now against us in the up or down area, Christ is working behind the scenes, leveling everything out. Amen? Amen. Now, Jesus says, other days of no war, Now let's put Jesus to the test. Because he said that 2,000 years ago. As of the days of Noah, so what? Maybe Jesus was a little bit mixed up here. But let's put him to the test. Jesus, who declares the end from the beginning. He said, as of the days of Noah, so shall it be. Amen? So let's see. Christ is speaking. Matthew is recorded in Matthew 24, 37. And I should have put the 39 and put that up there. Matthew 24, 37 to 39. I better, I better leave it. Because it might not work again. Let's leave it. 
But as the days of Noah were, past tense, amen? So shall also the common son of man be. For in the days before the flood, they were what? Eating. And they were what? Drinking. Marrying and giving marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And sadly, the Bible says they knew it not. Now what were they doing that didn't realize Noah was in the ark? All the animals were in the ark. For the Bible says they didn't know what happened until the flood came and destroyed them into them. They knew it not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the common son of man be. In other words, Christ is saying, when I come, it's going to be business as usual for many people. And I can meet them doing some things that they did not imagine they should be doing. And here we are. And the end of this minutes to get prime time on television to speak to the nation. The best thing is that we need more policies. We need better programs. We need more stiffer penalties as if that can change anything. For I read some of my Bible, but a um, Brave touched a little while ago. God, if you break one of the commandments, you break how many? Well, almost a whole world going to church tomorrow. Is that a crime? It is a crime. And these people ain't care. Based on the scriptures, they could be saved or they could be lost. They could be lost. But you know what? Fair in God. Because sense is not quick, you see? Because God is long suffering, you see? So we play around. But God is not playing around with us. So we use that cute word called crime. You know, like when me and a man get together, they call it an alternate lifestyle. What God calls it? Abomination. When I get a woman on a savage, I'll call her. Oh, that's my sweetheart. What God call it? Adultery, fornication. So we have these cute words, you see? So we said, a lot of crime is around here. But I took the time to look at the word in the dictionary. The word crime means violation. It also means transgression. It also means mortal what? But why they don't use that in place of crime? They just committed some sin. They just violated some law. But if you use crime because it sounds a little bit more cute, you see? It covers a lot of people. You see, because when I go to church and say, I'm not committing a crime, but that is what the Bible says. The Bible says, when you go to church on Sunday, no inside is the Sabbath, but you're committing transgression. You're also committing sin. And you're violating one of God's commandments. As a result, you're guilty of transgression, God's law. Amen? Next up, Isaiah 59, 12 and 13 says, that's the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 12 and 13, is we look at the topic, love, law, and grace. The Bible says this, for our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us, and our transgressions are with us. And as our and, and as and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgression and lying against the Lord. When we transgress, we lie who we lie against? The Lord. And departing away from our God, speaking oppression or speaking fraudulently, revolt. Revolt means what? Crime and what else? Or rebellion. And the Bible says, when we rebel, it's like us practicing witchcraft, conceiving and uttering from the hard words of falsehood. That's where we find ourselves today in this type of lifestyle. But praise God, there's hope. Amen? Amen. Isaiah goes on to say in Isaiah 40, 59, 14, and 15, and judgment turn it away back, or judgment turn, judgment turn it away backward, and justice stand it afar off. And truth followed in the street. And, he, and, um, and, and equity or honesty cannot what? Enter. Yea, truth fail it. And he departed from evil, making himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeases him that there was no judgment. So whenever we find ourselves in a way that crisis, I mean, people are coming after us in a way that's not right, God sees it. And God deals with it. Amen? He would not let them get away. Hosea wrote about it in his day. 
Let's, let's compare what happened in Hosea day and see if it has any relation to our day. In Hosea 4, 1 to 3, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord had what? A controversy with the inhabitants of Jupiter. With the inhabitants of the land. Why, Lord? Why have a controversy? Why is there so much of conflict with the land? Because there's what? No truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out blood, touch it blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwells there shall what? Language. Is it happening today? It's become full circle, my friend. But these people don't read on the radio talk shows, nor on the television programs. They don't want the Bible. They want human solutions to a sin carnal problem. But it will not happen. So Hosea said, my day, <laughs> you should see my day. And my day they were lying and stealing and sleeping with one another. And the land was mourning then and the land even mourning now. Amen? Amen? Next up. Speaking about the times of the end. Of a, speaking about the times of the end. The time of the end. Of, Jesus, of, of the end, Jesus said, I don't know what's in the In Matthew 24, 21 and 22. Speak of the time of the end, Jesus tells us what the end is going to be like in Matthew 24. He says this. In Matthew 24, 21 and 22. For then should be what type of tribulation? Great tribulation. Such as not since the beginning of the world. To this time. No, not even shall be. And except those days be shortened. There shall how much flesh be saved? How much? No flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, praise God. Those days should be shortened, praise God. So Christ said, you want to see what the end will be like? It can be so terrible before I step in place that if I don't step in, how much flesh can be saved? Well, read this on the TV. Bishops, pastors, what's, what's, what's going on? Warn the people of the rod to come, amen? So what was it like in the days of Noah? Let's go back in time, 6,000 years ago, just as they about. In Genesis 6, verse 5 to 6, the Bible says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagine the thoughts of his heart were only evil, what? Amen. Come on. We talk about the days of Noah. Christ in your day, evil will be continuously. The imagination will run awry, and men will do things you can't even imagine of. Verse 6, and the Bible said, and God repented that he made us 6,000 years ago. It repented the Lord. What was going on that he, that he, was, he was repentant of making us like it is today? And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it what? It grieved or pained him or angered him in his heart that he made us, my friend. And the Lord said, I, God, the lovely Jesus, will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I, God, had made them. But something happened in verse 8. But no, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. 6,000 years ago. 6,000 years ago? Because the people teach that grace came after the cross. No, my friend, 6,000 in Genesis. Noah found what? Grace. Grace in the eyes of the Lord. 6,000 years ago. Not 2,000 years ago, but 6,000 years ago, Noah found grace. What should we say then? In Romans 6, 1. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God said yes. God forbid. How should we that are alive to sin? You sure? You know, I can't read good. That word means alive, right? How should we that are dead to sin, singular, live any longer therein? Ask the question. Jump down a few verses here in chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. Let sin reign your mortal body. Let not sin reign in your mortal body. 
that this will be the last thereof. Neither ye your members, your eyes, your fingers, your toes, your hands, neither your members as of, of little young members as instruments of unrighteousness, of wrongdoing unto what? Sin. But ye your members unto who? God. As those are alive from the dead, and your members are instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall have dominion over you. It looks as if you can get victory over sin. That's what it looks like? That's exactly what it is. For sin should not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under what? Grace. Now we can spend a little bit of time on the verse 14. For a lot of people believe that because we are under grace, we can sin. But that text doesn't even let's say. The only time you're you, you under the law is when you commit what? Sin. So Paul said, For sin shall not have dominion over you and I. For we're not under the law, but we are empowered to keep the law by what? Grace. That word grace means dynamite. It's powerful. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But it's the power of God and salvation. Everyone that believes. Revelation Romans chapter 1. Moving right along. Question. Is that grace that no experience being demonstrated in our lives today? That's the question. No experience it. I mean, no experience it, he started off in the minority. But when the flower was over, he was in the majority. Did you get that? Yeah. When Noah started, the whole world was against him. Every man and the beast was against Noah. But when the flower was over, all those naysayers, all those who called him the crooked names were washed away in the flood. And Noah came out victorious because of grace. So the question is that grace being demonstrated in our lives today. Let's see. And this is the proof of the text. Titus 2, 11 and 13. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation and appeared how much men? All men. I don't want us to miss that. Never forget Brother Julian, I was on the talk show at ZNS, and a young man called him, Oh, grace just came out to 2,000 years. What you boys talking about? <laughs> I said, go get your Bible, sir. And he nice to be and got his Bible. As you please turn to Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Can you read it for us, please? For the grace of God that bringeth salvation to appear unto all men. I said, hold on. Question, sir. Is that grace speaking of before the cross, after the cross, or both sides of the cross? You got all night, so don't just take your time. Let's read the text again. For the grace of God. Shall I bring it up? Salvation and appeal on how much men? All men. Before the cross, after the cross, both sides of the cross, grace was in operation. Amen? Amen. And when grace operated in our lives, it teaches us to deny what? Ungodliness. Deny wickedness. Unworldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, ungodly in the next generation. In this present world. What you mean, love it? Naked girls walking down the street. Yeah, you, they live sober. Remember, um, did you see that picture this week? <laughs> you know, I got one. I got one. I got it. Let me do something. Jesus is coming for real. <sighs> it breaks my heart, says Linda. I cry now. Teaching us, my friend. The denying ungodliness and wickedness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this crooked and perverse generation. Looking for the blessed hope and the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Why should we live soberly, Lord? Anyone can answer the question? Why do you want us to live soberly? The answer comes from the Bible. In 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Keep awake. Because your adversary... Who's your adversary? Not your wife. Not your husband. Not your boss man. Not the pastor. Not the leaders. Who's your adversary? And I don't want you to forget that. That's our adversary, my friend. 
the devil. Now he may work through family members, but the chief man is who? The devil. He may work through institutions and, and different things, but the devil, my friend, is a who type of lion? A roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may what? Devour. Or those who you want to drown in their sin, their car and security. So let's be what? Sober, their friend. Why should we be sober? Jesus is speaking, but our adversary. And take heed to yourself. Lest at any time our heart be what? Overcharged. With suffice thing. Or indulgence. In drunkenness on the cares of the next life. The cares of this life. So that that day coming. Which day that is right The coming of Jesus Christ. So that that day come. Upon you and I unawares. For as a snare shall come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole world. I, want us to, I don't want us to miss that verse 35. Because we in this too. For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell there. On the face of the earth and the whole world. For all of us and the devil is on our case. And no Christ is saying, be, don't, get, don't get too sidetracked here. And verse 36 says, watch bold and the beautiful. Watch American Idol, amen. Watch the car race. Watch ye therefore and what? Pray always that you may be counted worthy to accept all the things that shall come to pass to stand before the Son of Man. And who's the Son of Man? Jesus. So here comes the question. Who are the only ones that will be able to stand before the Lord? Can we find a scripture text for that? In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 5. Who are the ones who are going to stand, Lord? Would you mind telling us? Revelation 3, 5. He that overcometh. Overcome what? Sin, my friend. No, not overcoming, but overcome it. That's very important. Because all those who overcome it when Christ comes are going to be lost. We have overcome every sin in Jesus Christ. He that overcome it. The sin should be clothed in white raiment. In other words, white, white, white women and sin don't go together. When you and I clothe with the robe of Christ's righteousness, the white women, that means we have overcome sin. Amen? And I will not blot his name out of the book of life. Oh, my name is in the book of life. But the Bible says if you don't overcome sin, it can be blotted out. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. There's a text in the back of Matthew, I think, Matthew 10, I think it is, but Christ said, if you, are, if you are ashamed to confess before men, I'll be ashamed to confess before my Father. Anyone read that before? So if you want to confess us, we must stand with him, amen, in righteousness and in peace and tranquility, amen. So those who overcome it, those are the ones who will be clothed with white raiment. Those are the ones who will be blood of the book of life. Those are the ones who are going up yonder. Next up, at the second coming of Jesus. Will the wicked be able to stand? Are you sure? Because some people teach that when Jesus comes, the wicked can go on living for a little while longer. They can have a second chance. There are people that teach that from pulpits. That Christ comes right now, we, we sweep off into the rapture, and those who left behind have a second chance. Anyone ever heard that before? In fact, even movies are with that. But let's see what the Bible says. Will they be able to stand a lot? In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Second lesson 2 2, verse 7 8. Will the bell stand, Lord? For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only He, the Lord God, who now let it, will let it until He be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of His mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of His mouth of His coming. So Christ said, when I come, if you stand in wickedness and unrighteousness, you will be destroyed by the brightness of my coming. You will not be able to stand. You will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. Amen. Excuse me. Amen. Next up. Was there a price paid for the lost as well as for those who will be saved? Was the price paid? Amen. See what the Bible says. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, the Bible tells how the price was paid. What? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are your own? 
Ye are not your own. You are not your husband's own, you're not your wife's own, you're not your own. So who own are you, God? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, which are God's. Amen? The Bible says we are bought with a price. Not with gold, not with silver, we are bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Thus, Titus 2, 14 and 15, who gave himself for us and us captive the whole world that he may redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself of peculiar people zealous of what type of works? Good works. These things speak and exalt and if you could all authority let no man despise thee. Peculiar people. What do they look like? Well I take the time to go to my dictionary. What does the peculiar people look like the Lord? Peculiar people are what? Strange queer, odd, uncommon, unusual, distinctive in nature or character from others. Amen? Amen. That means they will dress differently. They will walk differently. They will eat differently. They will conduct themselves differently because they are odd, singular, straight-laced extremists in Jesus Christ. That's what peculiar people look like. So when they see one, they don't wear makeup. Girl, <laughs> you look so dull. Because you're peculiar. You mean you don't eat um, chicken? No, because it has um, cancer in it. It has, um, what the word they use? Uh, arsenic in it. You mean you don't eat um? No, I ask the Lord for the victory, amen? I'm of a distinctive nature. I have a distinctive character different from others. I still love them. I shall, I shall invite them to be my friends and if I need to take them someplace and have them, I will, but I'm, I'm going to stand like the three Hebrew boys in the midst of all the people boogieing down to the music, they still talk. And someone said, King, do you know there are three boys there? They did they, they, they defy your orders? Bring them over here. Did, 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 did you know, did your boys not hear the, hear the order? That by the sound of music is boogieing on down? Maybe, maybe I'll give your boys another chance. Those boys say, King, we ain't checking for you. You can do whatever you want to do. This one thing we know, do know. If God with us, then He with us. If He with us, then He with us. So, so let it be. And he, and he kicked those boys in the fire, and then the king saw someone. <laughs> Who he saw? He saw Jesus, my friend. And those boys came out even a smoke of fire. And then the king reversed it, threw some people in there. And they stood tall too, right? No, my friend, they were burned to ashes. Our God is able, amen? amen. Speaking about, about Noah, the Bible says this about Noah. And I pray this will be our testimony. Only one verse. Genesis 2.20, after the Lord told Noah what to do. Thus did Noah what? According to all that God what? So did he. Can God say that of us? That he gave us something to do, and we did the commands of God. Those people are going to heaven, my friend. We are going to heaven once we do what God says. Noah did not backpedal. Once God spoke to him, he believed that voice, and he went forward obeying the voice of God. So you see, my friend, in John, 1 John 5, 1 to 3, the Bible says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ is born of God. And everyone that loved him, that begotten, that begotten love him, so also he is begotten of him, Jesus Christ. By this, not by another, but by this, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and do away with his commandments. This is how we would know who walk with God. When we keep his commandments. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. They're not harmful. Amen? Amen. This is the love of God. Not another one, but this is it. Once you love him, keep his commandments, this is the love of God. For whose for whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith, which is given us of God. Who is he that overcometh the world? 
But he didn't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness, because the Spirit is true. Amen? By which law would we be judged? James 2, 10 to 12 tells us which law. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend or sin in one point, is guilty of all. For he said, Do not commit adultery. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, also said also, Do not what? Kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou become a transgressor of the, a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they should be judged by the law of what? Liberty. So the Bible says God is going to use the law to judge us. Who is the he that said thou shalt not kill? God. God. And where can you find that? In the Ten Commandments, my friend. That's where you'll find it. That's your homework. Exodus 21 to 7. Take your time and go through it. Read it microscopically. And very slowly and distinctly. See if you find yourself guilty of any of them. Because if you're guilty of breaking any, James, are you guilty of breaking how much? All. So I can let that, that's your homework. I can let you be honest with yourself. Let's pick up your Bible, we read it every Sabbath, and go through one by one. And see if you stand complete in Jesus Christ. Because victory is sure one step to surrender Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? In Matthew 15, 8 to 9, Jesus speaks his right, speaks a sober commentary, and Matthew took the time to write it down. Speaking about church folks. There's people drawing eye to me with their mouth, and on me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. But in, but in, but in vain they do worship me. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of what? This is a sober piece of scripture right here. Go to church faithfully every Sabbath, every Sunday, but God said, your heart with me? No, your heart ain't with me. For your teaching, for doctrines, the commandments of man. So Solomon wrote, that's Matthew 15, 8 and 9. These people are worshiping me in vain, says God. Some people continue to write. They, they worship me. They come faithfully every week. But their heart is not with me. And they're teaching things that are not in the Bible. They are following the commandments of men. These people are worshiping me, says God. So in part of we go back and read our scriptures. Read the text through. Read them through. Ask your friends and associates when you meet with them. Are you asking for power to keep all the commandments of God? Don't be afraid to ask them. Because they may not know. In fact, Brother Julian could testify myself. We met two ministers of the gospel. They didn't even know where the Ten Commandments were found in the Bible. I can't remember any, but I can still find the church. So Rachel and Nassau, there are people who don't read the commandments, because they, if they read it, they can stand guilty before God. Know this. Proverbs 14, 12. There's a way. But seemeth right unto a man. But any of those ways are what? Are dead. And this text tells you that, that Solomon wrote it, wrote it twice in the same chapter. Same book, different chapters. Proverbs 14, 12 and Proverbs 16, 25. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man. But then those ways thereof are the ways of what? Yeah. Death, my friend. We got to make sure we walk with God. In my same right, we need to take our time to take the Bible and study it through to see if it's right. Because if it ain't right, we can find ourselves in the lake of fire. So let's study, amen? In closing, the time has come for each of us to walk in what? Righteousness. That's our message for today. Love, law, and grace. Any questions or comments? We need to know, my friend. And we need to make up our minds. To come hell or high water, we're going to walk with God if we've got to walk alone. If wife don't want to go, they're five feet. 
Lafaz bin no one go, Lafaz bin ink. If children go left, children ink, but you better go. Amen? Because then judgment, if we go on, stand on our own for the all by ourselves. When Christ began to question you and your walking, actually, where your wife is. When he began to question you and your walking, actually, where your husband is. He asked where your children, he asked you, what did you do? And there'd be no excuse. Well, Lord, <laughs> uh, my husband didn't want me to go, really? I didn't know your husband died for you. I thought I bought you with a price. But Lord, uh, my wife didn't want to go. Really? My children, Lord, really? Oh, my friend. There are a lot of people outside the yard was laughing at all. But when our rain began to fall, I can hear someone saying, Mom, why are you spitting on me? There's no one spitting on you. It was rain coming down of the sky. The terminal game is over there. That, that last outfit for the Shvastian show, when the devil's over there, everyone's running to the rocks and the mountains. But guess what? The water covered all of that. The only thing keep, only can keep rising was the boat. <laughs> the boat, my friend, was on top of all of that. And when the flowers just came right on, rang down. And when all rested comfortably, and the door was open, he prepared a sacrifice, thanking God for what he has done. My friend, the time has come. For us to walk in righteousness. If there's no question coming, Brother Boyd is going to sing a hymn of meditation for us today. Because God is watching us, my friend. He wants to save us. And we need to make up our minds that we're going to walk with God. Brother Boyd. Good morning. I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow my Jesus Oh, no turning back No turning back Though no one joins me, still I will follow. Though no one joins me, still I will follow. Though no one joins me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back, no world before me, there's a cross behind me, the world before me, there's a cross behind me. The world before me, there's a cross behind me. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. Yes, I have decided to follow, follow my Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bodhi. Is there one person here today that was standing righteous today that they are not turning back? Is there someone here like that today? Anybody here like that today? Now, I would like you to take a bold stand to stand here and ask God to empower you to walk in righteousness today. I need you to come on down here. 
There's no time for play, my friend. Time is almost finished. The clock on the wall is saying, that's it. Time almost up. The king of kings is looking down yonder. Our names have been accepted. The names have been rejected. Today is a day of reconsideration. Today is a day of reflection, a day of reconsecration to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That when he comes, our names will be among the Lamb's book of life, stay forever in righteousness. This is our hope and our prayer today. That the devil bring temptation from every side. We ask the Lord, Lord, empower us to say no. And I can assure you that will be a prayer you will answer every time. Once our prayer is sincere. I'll kneel and pray, Father in heaven. Your people are standing here. And I'm kneeling here rededicating our lives to you, Heavenly Father. The signs are times everywhere. If you're looking for faithful men and women to stand in this crooked of a voice generation, we want to be one of them, Father. So help us, Father, to continue to be steadfast and move. Abounding in your love that we will put aside all excuses that we used in the past. And there will be a day of renewing in walking with Jesus Christ. Be with us, Father. Let your spirit fall afresh on us. That we be vessels of light wherever we go. That men would know we've been with Jesus. Help us, Father. Allow us save us when we should come. Be with our children. To a little bit wayward. That you can hear to speak to them that still small voice a little bit more. Stronger. That they'll yield to you. Be with our husbands, our wives, who not fully understand the message. That they too will yield to the message. And say, I surrender. Help us, Father, stand on your word. That this day will be the day that you will work for us mightily. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we turn to your seat. Together, live out thy life within us, O Jesus, King of Kings. Be thou thyself the answer to all our questionings. Live out thy life within us.
but rest for common from being numbered is free. Awaiting thy decision when thou hast need of us. Live all thy life within us, O Jesus, King of kings. Be thou the glorious answer to all our questioning. May the peace of be with us as Jesus Christ go with us. Happy Sabbath.
Thank you.